As you run into the stronghold, you all gain the powers of the region, enough to defend the town from the evil dragon. <laughs> Hey everyone, I want to talk about Strongholds and Bastions in a way that you should be thinking for world building. I think this is an important concept that a lot of people are missing when talking about the new Bastion system for D&D or just Strongholds in general. Thinking that they should only be affecting their players as they level up, as if like they're powerful lords, instead of world building tools or town building tools. Great example, strongholds and followers from MCDM, they're very specific about the classes the characters play, and this is a very important detail. It makes them more relatable to your players. Hey, I'm Carmichael and I wanna be a great GM and run games that my friends want to play. The problem is I have this book and it is my latest muse and now one of the most important books to world building for Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to talk about how the tools for this book are essential to building towns in D&D, even though that's not what this is meant for. So let us begin. Strongholds. Or how like one D&D likes to call it, Bastion. So typically a Bastion or a Stronghold is a home base idea. This isn't new to D&D. A lot of people have talked about how it's always been around. There's even a little bit about it in the 2014 DMG. At the end of the day, you're making a home base for your, your players so that way they can always return to it. But the problem is, is that a stronghold or a bastion is a home base where players live and do cool stuff and craft things and then they go off onto a venture and come back. Pre-written ventures don't enable this. And if you use this for your own world building in your own custom games, it limits the amount of traveling and visiting the world or universe that you want to explore because players are incentivized to keep returning home. Let's talk about why players want strongholds because it makes my character cooler. It makes them more buff. It gives me a boon. It makes me a badass. With strongholds and followers, we have class bonuses that players can get. It gives them that high fantasy experience that really the game is intended to do at high levels. And knowing that most players don't ever get past 10th level, this is a great like, hey, here's a little bit boost of power so you can fight a super bad. And if the boon that they get from a stronghold is too complicated, let's say a whole new leveling system, very specific, intricate resource like new set of points doesn't really scream, hey, you should use this system. So this is where the MCDM strongholds and followers really shine. It comes down to really giving your players something that they're familiar with, dragon effects. So dragons in D&D have regional effects where the area around the dragon's lair is affected based off the dragon. The dragon has lair actions, meaning when you go to their lair, the dragon can implement actions based off the lair and dragons have legendary abilities. They're so powerful and their lair is a part of providing that power. Based off a stronghold or a home base, players based off their class can have a regional effect. You're affecting people nearby, you're affecting uh, the wildlife, and you're affecting possibly the trade or the economy nearby. Very simple, non-heavy flavor, really cool. Then players get lair actions or stronghold actions. And then you kind of have a legendary action action or a class improvement, something that goes above and beyond inspired by the class to really give it a mm -mm experience. And this builds the relationship between what class I choose as a player and the stronghold that I'm dealing with. And it doesn't matter what type of stronghold, it could be a keep, it can be a tower, it could be a temple, it could be an establishment. It can be any of those and a class can benefit from that, which is very important to the system and why it's really important for world building in your town. When preparing a town or building a town, the most important thing to do is start with your player characters. What do they need? Where do they get it? And what in town propels the plot forward? Those are the most important things when building and prepping a town. We often add an inn or a tavern, a couple farms, a market, some barracks for the guards, maybe a little house of worship and then houses sprinkled around. And that's about it. Congratulations, players are gonna to get to the inn, stay there, meet a couple NPCs, and then move on. 
spot. But if you take strongholds and the templates of keeps, temples, establishments, and fill your town with them, every town has strongholds. Every town has bastions. And the NPCs who run them are similar classes. So if I'm a rogue and I go to the inn and the inn is run by a rogue, oh, hey, I know that guy. That guy's a beefier version than me. Maybe he can be my mentor, or maybe he can become the party's rival. Maybe he becomes the patron. And if he becomes the patron, then maybe the players can benefit off the stronghold's regional effects and boons because they're aligned with that stronghold versus having to be the owner and the ruler, deal with the politics, deal with the housekeeping, worry about hirelings, worry about bastion points. And it doesn't matter what level you are. You have these abilities because you're aligned temporarily with the stronghold and the stronghold's missions and goals. You could go over to the captain of the guard who is running the barracks and you could train for to get your weapons improved. This also tells you how you can run ships when traveling between towns. The camps, which is a mobile keep, works for all your bandits. You walked into a bandit camp. This is essentially a keep. That means the barbarian or the rogue or even the fighter that's running this keep has legendary actions, regional effects. <laughs> it's essentially a mini dragon. You know what? Monk is an available class in my game. I should put monasteries in my world. Druid's Grove. Yeah, there should be druid groves everywhere in my world, in each forest, just like a hunting lodge should be in all my forests. The barracks for the local guard, that's a keep. The local cleric's church or mosque, they are a temple. The inn, the theater, those are establishments. The lighthouse, that's an arcane tower. So you can take your strongholds and rather than have them be designed for your home base that your players always return to and kind of have to return to to get these leveling bonuses. A bastion system, a home base system, a stronghold system should be in addition to the world building. It's not something rare to heroes. It is how the world is built and run. A stronghold is a keep that soldiers stay in. There are soldiers in almost every town. Players don't need to be rewarded their strongholds and bastions just for the sake of playing the game. Inheriting it has more value. Finding out local places are, can be used as strongholds against bad guys. That has more value because now they are incentivized to interact with the world, interact with NPCs that they might not have otherwise. They had the agency to play Dungeons and Dragons. They had the agency to interact with whatever world the DM is making or running. Again, Strongholds and Followers is my muse right now in world building, and it is absolutely fantastic and absolutely amazing. It's probably gonna be one of the best books that I hold on to for the rest of my life. More times than not, we'll talk about a dwarven keep or an elven temple. And the reason we describe a stronghold based off the ancestry is we assume that the reader or the player understands the architecture or the world building of that ancestry or fantasy race. It's a great assumption because picking your ancestry in D&D is literally the first thing you do. Are you a dwarven fighter? Are you a tabaxi cleric? And the second thing that players have to choose is their class. An ancestry and class are the most relatable, most valuable details in D&D because that's what the players have chosen first. That's how they were introduced into the game. So when you approach your world building, especially with strongholds or bastions, you want to approach it through ancestry and classes. Depending on your world, a dwarven keep might look different than an elven keep. Maybe they're coexisting and the architecture is not that different. Maybe it's a mixing pot. Maybe it isn't a mixing pot. That's up to you. Building strongholds throughout your town or your region inspired by classes adds such depth to your game. It makes the players' choices of their class feel important and impactful to your world. If I chose a fight and I find that the guard's barracks is a keep 
for fighters, or if, I f if I'm a cleric and I go to the local temple and I see another cleric there running it, or I go to a druid's grove, a rogue's pirate ship, a barbarian camp, a monk monastery, a bard's theater. This makes me feel like I am more immersed in the world because the class I chose exists in the game outside of me. And that makes me want to interact with it even more. I want to know what this bard is like and how they got a theater because maybe I want a theater. You're using the same system again and again and again as the foundation to your creativity. If you have any other ideas about strongholds and bastions and bases, or you just completely disagree with me entirely, let me know in the comments down below. Let's have a discussion about what makes strongholds interesting for D&D, how they can help you as a world builder, a DM running a game, even a one shot. And then you can head over to Patreon, join and hop into the Discord with a sick custom role. I also wanna give a big shout out to my backers from YouTube members to Patreon who support me and this channel. You guys make my life a better place. I'm C-Mike. Make sure your games are fun for everybody and I'll see you next time.